Now I'm going to discuss a couple of two and three mark questions. Let's first take a look at this question. So you're given in the question that the object is placed at a distance of 15 centimeters, which means this distance is 15 centimeters. And we can write that u is equal to, you have a negative sign with a real object all the time. Because you'll place the object this side and light is traveling in this direction. And the distance is measured from the center of the lens to this. So the object distance is always negative for a real object. The focal length of the lens is given to be 10 centimeters. Since it's a convex lens, the focal length is going to be positive. Now, we know that the, the formula for finding out the image is 1 by V minus 1 by U equals 1 by F. Putting in the values over here, we get now, once you work this out, you can see that V is equal to 30 centimeters. That means the image is going to be formed at a distance of 30 centimeters from the lens. See, the mirror that is placed over here is not, the, is not changing the path of light. It is not refracting the light. So the light is going to, if the mirror was not present over here, light would have traveled straight along this path and it would have reached this point to form the image at I. So now this distance from L to I is the image distance which is 30 centimeters. Now the question says that the distance over here, this distance is 10 centimeters. And what we need to find is the focal length of the convex mirror. To find the focal length of the convex mirror, so you have to if you look at this over here light which is incident is retracing its path which means it is reflected back along the same path. Now light retraces its path in case of normal incidence. Suppose this is light incident on a mirror and angle of incidence is zero then it is going to come back. In case of a concave or a convex mirror That only happens when light is incident along the radius because in this case the mirror over here and this light make an angle of 90 degrees. So when light is incident along the radius then it is normal incidence and the light is going to retrace its path. This means that this point over here at which it is incident on the convex mirror, this line is the radius of curvature. This is the radius of the mirror. So this distance is also going to be R. This distance MI is also going to be R. Now from our calculations, we can see that this distance over here is 20 centimeters, which means that the radius of curvature of the mirror is 20 centimeter and the focal length, you know, is half the radius of curvature. So that is going to be 10 centimeters. In this case, we have to plot a graph showing the variation of the flux with time. One is for a rectangular loop and the other is for a circular loop. You know that the magnetic flux is given by integral V dot ds. In this case, the magnetic field is into the plane of the paper and the normal to the coil will also be into the plane of the paper. So the angle theta is zero. That means the magnetic flux is going to be B times the area of the coil. Now, as the coil moves out, suppose I just choose the coil. As the coil moves out like this, you can see that the area is changing uniformly. So in that case, if you plot a graph for the flux versus time, this is the flux and this is time. At time t0, the flux is maximum and after a certain time, the flux is going to be zero. So we get a straight line graph like this. At this time, the flux is going to be zero. 
But in this case, for the circular loop, you can see as the circular loop moves out, when it is at this position and this position, you can see that the area is not changing uniformly. So since the area is not changing uniformly, for the other case, we can have a graph like this. Flux is maximum. At a certain time, the flux has become zero and the change is nonlinear. This is flux. This is time. We don't know the exact variation of this graph. We can just say that this is nonlinear and this is linear. question says that the intensity at the central maxima is I0 and the distance OP, this distance X equals one third of the fringe width and you know that the fringe width is given by lambda capital D over small d where capital D is this distance and small d is the distance between the two slits. We have to find the intensity at this point over here. So to find the intensity over here, let's first find the path difference and the phase difference. So if you look at this, if you just join this over here, and if you look at the path difference, we have one wave from here and another wave which travels from here. So this distance would be the path difference. This distance is the path difference which is given by d sin theta and this angle is theta and this angle is also going to be theta. So the path difference for these two waves is d sin theta. Now you can see from this triangle, triangle O, P and let's call this M. You can see from triangle O, P, M that sin theta is given by OP over PM and we can write this as one third lambda D over D by capital D. We are actually approximating PM by OM which is to say that sin theta is approximately equal to tan theta is approximately equal to theta because theta is actually very small. So now this gives us sine theta as one third lambda over small d and the path difference for the waves which are reaching the point P is d sine theta which is equal to one third lambda. Now this means that we have to find the intensity at a point P where the path difference between the waves which is reaching it is one third lambda. You know that a path difference of lambda results in a phase difference of 2 pi. So a path difference of one third lambda would result in a phase difference of 2 pi by 3. Now let's look at the intensity. The intensity I is given by 4 I naught cos square phi by 2 where phi is the phase difference and over here we have found the phase difference as 2 pi over 3 so this can be written as 4 I naught cos square so you can see that the intensity comes out to be I naught but over here, the assumption is that at the central maxima where phi is 0, the intensity is 4 I naught. So if it is 4 I naught at the central maxima, it becomes I naught at the point P. Now in our question, we are given that the intensity at the central maxima is I naught. So which means that the intensity at the point P is going to be I naught over Four. To draw the output waveform for this, let's look at 
the inputs a and b and we'll write x and for a b let's take all combinations 0 0 1 0 0 1 and 1 1 now since this is an AND gate the output for this say we denote this by y is going to be the output for a NAND gate now we'll just write the truth table for a NAND gate that would be say the inputs are a b this is for an AND and this is for a <coughs> sorry NAND so this is 0 0 1 0 0 1 1 1 for an AND gate you get an output when both a and b are 1 so this would be 1 1 1 0 so this is the output of a NAND gate which in our case is y this y over here for this combination would be 1 1 1 0 now for the next NAND gate this is y and this is also y so you have both the input terminals as y which is 1 1 1 0 and once again we have a NAND gate and you can see that when both the inputs are 1 and 1 then the output of a NAND gate is 0 so this would be 0 0 0 and when both the inputs are 0 the output is 1 so this would be 1 so now this finally gives us the truth table as we'll just write a b and x because these are the two inputs and x is the output of this entire combination which is 0 0 0 and 1 you can see that this is an AND gate this means that this combination is acting as an AND gate now over here to draw the output waveform we'll just extend this for this time interval this is 0 and this is also 0 so the output is going to be 0 during this time interval over here this is 1 and this is 0 so if this is 1 and this is 0 the output is again going to be 0 for this time interval for the next time interval this is 1 and this is 1 and you can see that the output should be 1 so the output should be 1 over here I'll just choose a different color so this is the output that we have this is 1 once again this is 0 and this is 1 so the output for 0 and 1 would again be 0 this is 0 and 0 this would again be 0 and this is 1 and 0 this would again be 0 so this is the output which we would get for this combination of gates <laughs>